Well, obviously there's not much going on for people traveling around fishing, but fishing is what we do, so that's what we're going to continue to do. It's time for these steelhead to run, and we're steelhead fishermen, so we're going to go fishing. Nobody's out here. We're not going to get exposed by anybody or contaminate anybody. The fish don't carry the virus, so we're going after it. It's what we do, so we're going to do it. It'll give us a chance to play with some new patterns, fine-tune some techniques, catch some fish, and bring you some interesting videos. So if you're stuck at home, at least you maybe can itch the itch with this stuff. So over the next two or three days, this, um, you can follow along as we try to catch a fish. You now we're going to be dealing with high water, cold water, uh, heavy rains, wind, a lot of wind. So there's going to be a lot of changes in the conditions. Understand conditions change daily, conditions change hourly. We have to adapt. So you're going to see a lot of different techniques. You can see us swinging flies. You can see us um, dead drifting under an indicator. Just adjusting to what we walk into at that moment to try to produce a fish. Hope you enjoy it. Um, follow along and let's see what we can get. I just want to let everybody know what we're trying to do here. As spring goes on, I tell everybody that conditions can and do change daily, and sometimes a lot. We're almost in back to full winter mode. The river's high for this time of the year. Water temperatures today are 37, 36. It's cold. Yeah, that we, water's cold. Yeah, we've had some 40 here, so we've got a thermal shot going on. The fish are not on the gravel yet. They're not in spawning mode, but they're right on the edge of that that makes them really crabby. That 37, 38 degrees can be a pain. And that's what we're dealing with, plus 30 mile an hour winds and driving rain. So it's been a fun gig out <laughs> here today. But anyways, we've had a kind of swing is just not working. We ran through this pool and swung some flies until we washed the dye out of them, out of the material. So we've had to go back to to a little bit out of the dark side. So we're actually running an indicator because we got to stay into the inside edges of this heavy water. A little bit of weight to get down. In this case, we picked this one up on an egg pattern. There's probably been some spawning in here, so they're reacting to an egg fly. I'm running a nymph down through here, and all 
I've got so far is one white sucker. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna keep experimenting. But the other thing is Rick's running a really light tip, but he's running four pound tests, so he's had to be very gentle with this fish to get a really soft, light drift, which is probably that one of the reasons why this fish picked it up is probably that really soft drift that he was able to get under the float, carrying a little bit of the weight with the indicator, and just letting this really hard, careful, natural drift is probably what did it. And like I said, we're working hard today for a bite or two. Next time I'm gonna make Rick talk. Yeah. <laughs> away. In this colder water and in this high water, a lot of these fish are in these inner seams. And when you're dealing with cold temperatures, you know, you're not gonna get that aggressive take on indicator or a swing like normal would. So basically what we're looking for is that indicator to do one thing different than what it's not normally doing throughout the sea. So we're trying to do a slow presentation, hit those seams where these fish be laying in this high water. Be out in that fast current, they don't like any more than we do, so you don't want to concentrate on your slower seams. All right, day two. Uh, what we're gonna do is fish a little bit lower down on the river here today. I'm by myself, um, normally Ricky's with me, but he gets to stay home and play with his three year old lucky bastard. But, anyways, so I'll be struggling with the camera and everything by myself. We're in the bottom end of the river. Yesterday we were up top, the water was very cold. So I'm hoping if I come down a little bit, I might gain a degree or two. It was in the mid forties all night. So just maybe I gotta pick up a degree or two and these fish won't be so crabby down here. We'll try, the water's still very high. It's not blowing as hard, not raining as hard today. So I'm gonna try swinging down here because the water's just so big that dead drifting just doesn't work. You could sit here and pound this thing on a dead drift all day long and never cover the water. So we have to go to a swinging technique which is a lot more efficient and we can cover a lot water a lot quicker. So I'm going to run this pool a little bit and uh, see what I can do. I just got to get a rod set up and fly set up to do this and I'll show you in a minute here what I'm doing for a setup. Plus I got to check the water temperature. Uh, follow along on day two and let's see what we can find. It is better. We got 39 degrees down here. Uh, quick little tip. I do like using these. This is a fish pond thermometer. I like these over the uh, infrared ones. Maybe I'm just a little old school. But another thing is you'll notice I went out into more of the quicker water. I didn't stay on the inside edge. You can sometimes get three degrees difference in the temperature from the main current and the inside um, back eddy. So you want to get out into the more of the flowing water. Like I said, I got 39. It's a lot better than 36. We'll see. That's still not quite into that. Okay, we're gonna chase and do our thing mode, but maybe they won't be so crabby. We just gotta knock on the door and see if somebody wants to play. All right, a real quick rundown of what I'm setting up. I'm already tingled. I'm obviously running one of my favorite tube flies. See how that works. I put on 12 foot of um, T17. This is this pool's gotten dug out and it's deep and with this water flow here I need to get down fast, stay down deep. So this so I'm going with um, about 12 foot of T17. I still have my winter rig here, my intermediate schedule head because I'm going to need some help keeping that fly down, keeping the tip down and slowing the swing down because it's still 39 degrees. We're not in that magic 40. Uh, remember folks, a couple points, not even a half a degree can make a big difference at this stage of the way these fish behave. So I'm expecting them still to be a little bit groggy, not too grabby. We're going to have to almost serve it up to them. So this is the setup I'm running. Let's see how it works. Let's see how this fly looks in the water. 
I tried to do this on the river while I was fishing down through a pool, but the environmental noises with all the wind we're dealing with, the river noise, the microphone just didn't, and I was just lost in the background. So I'm gonna try this as a voiceover. What I was doing is when I start a pool at the top, I have very systematically I'll fish through it. So I'll start out at the very head. In this particular pool, I'll work with just the head of the driver head and tip of my line, and I'll work that inside edge with a few casts. And then, standing in the same position, I'll extend my cast, probably three, four feet of line, and just extend the cast, extend the cast, until I'm at my max distance. In this situation, it'll be the other side of the river. With this rig, I could hit the other side without any trouble. At that point, I'll start stepping down. So I'll take a step. Generally, I take a step during the sink part of my presentation, where I got the line out, there's no tension on the line, the line's digging and then I'll take my step there. That helps the tip get down a little deeper in, those, in that heavier water. And I'll work my way down at that point. I will stop periodically at spots where I have hooked fish before and I might work that a little bit. What I'll do is I'll make a few casts and vary the style of cast. Maybe a little fast, a little slow, maybe throw a dead drift in there just to see if a different style would trigger a response and moving on. I do that when I have nobody follow me. If I'm in a pool by myself, I'll definitely do that. But if somebody's coming down behind, I'll just move along. And do that until I basically get to the end. A couple other things that I'll do is, I'll during all this, I'll vary that cast anyways as I'm stepping down. Like I mentioned before, when I stop at a spot and work it, I'll just mix up the presentation to look at the, cat, uh, the swing. Now the rod that I'm using right now with a heavy tip, it's not the prettiest casting. It's a little overloaded, so what I have done is I use a little bit of sustained anchor. That helps get that rod to go, turn that out, make that cast without any trouble, and I can carry on and cover and work my way through. That's generally how I break down a pool. I hope you can follow along. I hope it makes some sense. If you have questions, just hit the comment section. Another day on the water. Um, like you said, we've been banging around dealing with some pretty tough weather conditions. Today it's not so bad, it's a little gray, but at least the wind ain't blowing 30 miles an hour. The wind ain't pouring. We might actually be able to keep the cameras out today and not cook one. So, weather's well, conditioned a lot better. The other thing is, is the water temperature is up a couple more degrees. So we're gonna cover a bunch of water. We got the drift boat today. I got Ricky to help today, so we're gonna float down through, hunt a bunch of gravel, fish in pools, see what we can find. And like I said, conditions can and do change quickly this time of the year, so we'll see how things evolved over the last couple of days. And today we're gonna run the boat, follow along and let's see what we can find.
Ouch. Yeah, I'm chase for a net. Yeah. <laughs> Watch the step. No problem. Come on, get to go. How's that? Alright. Wait on you're ready. Whatever, because you can zoom it up. I'm ready. to put on a shirt sink on that thing mm -hmm. then run the screamer mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly it's a seven and a half foot float with two and a half through a t11 that two and a half foot of what you say t11 yep so what are you gonna do run one of your traditionals uh-huh you know it <laughs> yeah so you're gonna outclass me yes i am yeah i catch one with a woolly bird with a hot pink head on it so you're gonna go and class it up yep got you it know, i hope these fish are classy they are. The New York State fish. They're always classy. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the spawn has started up here. Finally. A uh, little skunk. Uh, size 3. What happened? You broke me off. <laughs> broke you off. Yeah. What were you swinging for a tippet? Uh, 10 pound. <laughs> 10 pound? Yeah, they'll do that. I mean, it's especially when they're jacked up like they are. Oh, you ain't kidding. Yeah, they can come and pop you pretty good. Oh, well, we'll put another Look, one on. Try it again. One. Yep.
finished up with the float pretty quick. We just moved through the water a little faster than normal. Um, dropped a few fish, landed a, a fish or two. A couple of drops we didn't get on camera and so on. But anyways, we're back in the upper part where we put the boat in. We're going to fish for a little bit. Got up in here. We thought about swinging flies and just seeing if anything was moving around on the gravel. And what we noticed was some adult stone flies on the surface. So we decided to do a little wander on the dark side. We broke out the indicators and the stonefly nymphs and we're going to see what we can do. See if anybody's in there wants to play with us. So we're just, once again, like I say, conditions can and do change all the time. And sometimes during the day, in which case is, is we were noticing that the fish just didn't want to play, that were up on the gravel. The fish in the pools are still kind of crabby. We moved up river. We see a little bit of a hatch. We're going to take advantage of that and see if we can't move a fish. Let's see what happens. What's going on in here is this brown trout, which is, we don't catch a lot of browns on the Salmon River, but you'll note there's some dead fish in here. Since we caught him, he's vomited up these two, what appear to be juvenile steelhead that he's kind of woofed down. I'm quite sure these are wild fish that are because our hatchery fish are not this big yet, or been stocked. So I think we got a, uh, a um, wild smolt of um, wild steelhead he came with you, and his brown's kind of getting fat on him. So you can see these two laying in the net with him. We're going to get this fish out, get it back in the water, get a few beauty shots. These two steelhead were just been vomited out by the brown trout Rick just caught. Look at the size of these things that they'll eat. You know, browns can be a pretty big predator in here for everything. In this case, he picked up a couple of what I'm assuming are wild steelhead because all of our hatchery steelhead are still in the hatchery and haven't stuck. So we're probably having a wild steelhead smolt migration right now. And these guys got consumed. They ended up on lunch menu. <laughs> yeah, with brown trout to eat anything. They just love to eat. They're kind of like me. They don't care. Uh, just a little bit of something that came out of them when we netted them. Kind of a, this is a pretty unique catch, a pretty unique experience. This doesn't happen to us all that often, but... We do know that the browns eat a lot of our um, migratories in here. What's interesting, they'll stop eating these things as soon as the bug catchers get going. That's what we have learned. 
Well, we're going to wrap things up. Uh, we've been stumbling around the river for the last three days. You know, obviously, we haven't had the most wonderful weather, as you can tell, between the high winds, the downpours. We almost cooked a camera. Uh, we did catch a couple real interesting fish. Uh, hope you found some of the tips that we talked about useful and some of the fishing entertaining. Once again, please feel free to comment. Your comments are always helpful and obviously we'd like you to subscribe and hit that little bell icon because we're going to be putting a lot more out as we go on through the year. Once again folks, thanks for watching and until next time.